are getting into the heart of the book of Job here in chapters 18 and 19. Job gives an answer to his friend Bildad for his failed attempt to comfort Job and give his opinion for the cause of his suffering. Job makes a peculiar proclamation after lamenting over his circumstances. He describes God as his redeemer. He makes this claim in verses 25 through 27 of chapter 19. Read it with me. But as for me, I know that my redeemer lives and he will stand upon the earth at last. And after my body has decayed, yet in my body, I will see God. I will see him for myself. Yes, I will see him with my own eyes. I am overwhelmed at the thought. In ancient Israel, a redeemer was a family member who bought a slave's way to freedom. What tremendous faith Job had, especially since he was unaware of the conversation between God and Satan. Job thought that God had brought all these disasters upon him. Faced with death and decay, Job still had an expectancy to see God. And he expected this in his own body. What makes this proclamation so profound is that at this time, Israel did not have a well-developed doctrine of the resurrection. Although Job struggled with the thought that God was presently against him, he firmly believed that in the end, God would be on his side. His belief was so strong that Job became one of the first to prophesy of the resurrection of the body. In Jesus' famous Sermon on the Mount, he proclaimed, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Sound familiar? You see, when Jesus, our great Redeemer, preaches the kingdom of heaven, he's not talking about a distant land and time. The kingdom of God is a life, and it exists now in the new life and new heart of every believer who commits to follow Jesus, and it will extend into eternity. May we be those, like, like Job, who despite our circumstances, good, bad, even terrible, hold fast to the truth that in the end, we will see God with our own eyes. And in the end, God's justice will always triumph.